What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down some different wide receiver terms that you may or may not know and clear up some of the questions that you have about the position. So I hope this video helps you guys out. Hope it can teach you a few new things, but also, fellas, if you are a wide receiver and you're maybe not sure how you should be training this offseason, check out that very first link in the description below for our ultimate eight-week wide receiver workout plan. What you'll get access to is eight weeks of wide receiver daily gym and on-field workouts to improve your overall all skills. We break down every drill and gym exercise with sets and reps and give you a video example of each specific drill. So check out that very first link in the description below if you're interested. Let's get started with this video. So now, first term, and these are terms that you know I will use, other wide receiver coaches will use, coaches at your school might use, that you might be a little bit confused on that we get the most questions about. So the first one is going to be kind of a phrase called getting skinny. So what does getting skinny mean? Skinny is like what you do with the stem on your route versus press coverage to put you in a good position at the top of the break to get separation. So let's play this full speed. So this wide receiver is Terry McLaurin. He takes an inside release while running an inside breaking route like a dig. So this is one of the most important routes to get skinny on and important situations to get skinny on. So let's talk about it, right? So off the line, he comes up to the ball. We see a DB who's lined up in outside shade press, right? So if he's outside shade press, his goal is to probably prevent the outside route and force everything to the inside. Maybe McLaurin has his split cut down. So this wide receiver is anticipating, or this DB is anticipating an outside breaking route from him. And this DB probably has some kind of help to the inside, like a safety, a linebacker dropping into coverage, etc. So what his hope would be is that McLaurin sees that he's outside leverage. He has to run an inside route. So what he does is he just takes takes off and runs to the inside. He doesn't go at the DB and he doesn't get skinny, which is what creates a bigger window for my quarterback. So you see McLaurin off the ball. Maybe he could have given a little bit better of a press release, but he gives a jab to the outside. He takes this inside release, but you see how he doesn't just keep running to the inside. He reassesses himself vertical. He gets his hips back vertical. It's almost like he's leaning back into this DB and trying to get hip to hip with him. That is essentially what getting skinny is. So getting skinny is getting hip to hip with the DB. Now, getting skinny can help you obviously stack. And we're going to talk about what stacking is here in a little bit and show a bad example of it. But getting skinny is a great position to put you, is a great way to put you in the position to get separation on honestly any route, not just an inside breaking route. Because now when he's getting skinny and he's getting back into this DB, when he makes this break, he's not running right into the safety. He's creating a big bigger window from the safety. Like here, I'll draw it on the screen right now. Like let's say here's the quarterback. Let's say here's the free safety. Let's say here's the wide receiver in the corner. If you were to just take off and run this dig and break it off, you'd run right into the safety and there'd be a corner right on your hip. That's a tight window for the quarterback, right? So now if we go back, you take an inside release, but you push back up vertical and you break, all of a sudden that's a bigger window. You're not running right into the safety. That's what getting skinny means. Now, let's talk about if he had to run an outside breaking route. Would getting skinny still apply? It absolutely would. Because think about it. If he's outside shade press, and let's say you had to run a 10-yard out. If you had to run a 10-yard out and you take an inside release, which is what you would do, you're probably not going to be able to get an outside release when he's an outside shade press because his sole purpose with that coverage is to prevent the outside route. Force you to the inside, take what he gives, or take what the DB gives, which is the inside release. But we get skinny skinny so we could actually throw by at the break point because imagine if we were right here and let's say McLaurin was a yard more to the inside but he had to break on an out route and he had to try to slip under the DB he couldn't stack him he wouldn't be able to do that because there would be too big of a gap but if we go hip to hip with the DB and we push all the way to the break point guess what we could do we could probably use my arm put it on the back of his shoulder back of his hip he drops his hips and we could throw by that's the benefit of getting skinny so whenever you hear that getting skinny on your route that's what that means get hip to hip with the DB so at the top of the break it's an easier time getting separation let's play this thing again full speed one more time great job by McLaurin with this release taking what the DB gives and then getting skinny to create a bigger window now again I know what you're thinking it's one on ones, there's no safety on the field. Why not just run it? Because at this level, fellas, if you're not practicing game realistic situations, you are not getting better. So now the next term that is thrown around a lot is stemming. What does stemming mean? So 
stemming is one of those things where like like what is the stem of the route for those of you that don't know that are real beginners right so like like a totally beginner way of breaking down a stem not so much stemming we'll get to that but stem of the route is like the point between the start and the break so like let's say you're starting at the five yard line and let's say you're running like a dig like a back of the end zone dig which is about like what like 15 yards right so the stem is the point between the start and the break so leading up to the break point now stem a DB is essentially a fancy way of saying attacking his leverage. So what is a DB's leverage? A DB's leverage is his whether where he's pretty much lined up. Like, like is he angled inside or is he angled outside? So he's inside of us. So that means that he has inside leverage. If he was lined up outside of us, that would mean he has outside leverage. And sometimes he could be head up, which means that he might disguise his leverage and jump to the inside, jump to the outside, or he just has like a head up leverage, if you will. So this wide receiver is running just a quick little five yard out. So he stems the DB to the inside, AKA attacking his leverage, which creates more space to the outside. So let's talk about it, right? So if we have this inside shade look, we angle my stem to the DB's leverage because when we try to threaten it, like think about it like this, if this DB was smart and he has to protect the inside, don't give up a slant, don't give up a dig, and he's got a wide receiver running right at him, what does that look a lot like? That looks a lot like an inside route. So he's gonna try to protect his leverage, which will cause him to move to the inside, weave to the inside and that creates a bigger opportunity for us to separate. It creates more space. So I can accelerate, run out of the break and actually create separation because I stemmed him. So attacking a DB's leverage is how you would stem. Now think about it like this. Let's say you had to run like a, uh, let's say you had to run um, like a quick slant and this DB was outside shade. You would stem to the outside and attack him get him to widen, and that creates a bigger window for us to the slant because we didn't just go run right to the safety help. And same thing on a five yard out. If I just take off and try to run around him, I'm going right to the sideline, which is another form of the DB's help. So stemming him is a great way to get him to move and get separation. So stemming, that's what that means. Play it again, full speed one more time. Great job attacking that leverage and then working on this route. So Next thing I want to talk about is something called restack or stacking. Now, this is a question that a lot of people ask. It's like, coach, what do you mean by stacking? What do you mean by restacking? And this is something that every single wide receiver coach probably says at one point or another. And that is literally like, like exactly how it sounds. You want to try to stack yourself on top of the DB. So you want this DB right here to be running directly behind you, right behind your hips. So you want to put yourself over the top of the DB with your route. Now, why is that beneficial? And I'm going to show you right now. So this is a bad example of stacking. Now, this route actually ends up working. This is a completion. This is a hell of a play by the wide receiver, but got a little lucky. So let's play at full speed. So he comes off, great hands off the ball, but you see how he just kind of runs to the outside. There's not much space there for that quarterback to kind of lead him, if you will. So let's talk about it, right? So off the ball, if he comes off here and he gets this outside release, swats the DB's hands right here, he should be trying to dip that shoulder and reassess and get back over the top of this DB to stack him. Because again, when you just take off, like let's say you have to run a fade, right? A fade is a form I would consider of an outside breaking route. That means the quarterback needs some space to actually fade us. If we had to run a 10 yard out, the quarterback needs some room to throw us open. We have to run a comeback. He needs some room to lead us. But if I come up to, if I come off the line and let's say, for example, I come off here, I give this move, I swat his hands and I just keep on running. And this DB's maybe a little bit closer. He gets into my hip. He's just going to squeeze me to that sideline and I'm not going to have any room. What we have to do, fellas, is we have to put myself right back over the top of this DB so that quarterback has some room to fade me, like we said. Now, is it just for a fade? No, it's for any other route, right? We want to stack because if I stack him over the top, I could got I got a two-way go situation. What do I mean by two-way go? I mean I could go inside or I could go outside. So like let's say you took, let's say we come back to the top, DB's inside shade press, and you have to run like a post route, right? You could attack him inside and swat his hands just like we did, take the outside release and stack over the top, and you could give a really hard fake to the outside and break on a post. Vice versa, if you have to run an out route, you could give a really hard fake inside and run an out route. Stacking or restacking, if you will, should be your goal anytime that you face press coverage because it's an opportunity for a two-way go 
and it gives us space to fade when the quarterback needs to throw us open or fade us open on any route that is thrown downfield. Let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. Again, great job by this wide receiver fighting hands off the line. Great job making a play, but we got to make ourselves a little bit more quarterback friendly. That is not the most space for a QB. We need to give him more space to fade us open and give him an easier time. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. We always appreciate the feedback. It's always great to hear from you guys. And again, fellas, we are going to be, if you guys would like an eight week wide receiver workout plan with the gym and on the field with the exact exercise you should be doing and drills, check out that very first link in the description below. Again, we'd love to get you on that. I'll see you guys next time.